There is a scratch on my van and a little dent on it. Like by the headlight? That's where no. I hit it. It's on the headlight. The headlight? Are you talking about the driver's side or the passenger side? More like the driver's side. But like my car no. bumped into it. I wasn't even in my car when it happened. I was underneath your van. Oh. And, and my you were car- underneath my van? Yeah, I was working on something. And, and my I left the parking brake off and it rolled into it. And then it made your van roll forward, and I think it might have hit something in, in front also. Like your van bumped into something. Uh, I don't know. So it might have got both the front and the back. I don't know. I All I know is I didn't see any damage except for the side, but I don't think it hit the side. Oh, no. It was more just like the very back. And yeah, yeah. My, my car, I left it in gear and, and turned on. So it just started driving itself forward. So really, I don't even know if I'm responsible technically, because I wasn't driving and the car. And you said that you were under where? I was underneath your van, working on something. Why was you underneath my van? I was working on something. You were working on something underneath my van? Yeah. What were you it, working on under my van? I don't really want to say, if you don't mind. I'll just, I'd rather... I really need you to say what you were doing under my van. I was fixing something. What were you fixing? Okay... I, I'm kind of a graffiti artist, and my thing, I like to be original. My thing is I like to get underneath the van and draw things with spray paint and Sharpies and sometimes even crayons. Mm-hmm. And I was drawing a picture of Dick Butt. Under my van. Yeah, on the bottom, like kind of where the, the along the, the tailpipe muffler thing, you know, the pipe. Why and, would you draw on somebody else's van? But it, it's underneath. It's not like anyone can see it. But the point is, I'm an but artist, still. and I know it's there, and it just makes me happy to know that like, I'm driving around, and every car in the neighborhood has my art underneath it. Well, I think that's destroying other people's property, don't you think? Well, you wouldn't even know about it if I hadn't said anything. You, you should get under and admire it. And like, the thing is, like, someday, if you're getting an oil change or you're getting work done, the mechanical lift it up, and yes. he'll look under there, and he'll just be like, wow, I'll look, this looks I'll look at really it. neat. Did you put your initials on there anyway? <laughs> Yeah, I did, actually, on, on, right in, on the bottom part of the art. All right. Well, thanks for telling me. I didn't see any damage on it. I thought but you said... please don't write on my van no more. I, wouldn't, I would never write on the van itself. I was writing on the bottom. Right. No, you said that you didn't hit the side of the van, just the back. Yeah, and it hit it pretty hard, though. There wasn't, like, any cracks or any. I thought I saw a crack. There is a crack in my bumper. Oh, no. But I wasn't driving That's the car. Why I wanted to talk to you before I made a police report, which I didn't really see any significant damage, and I didn't make a police report. You did? I was kind of wanting to talk to you first. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you didn't. Because the I... van's not in my name. Whose name is it? <clears throat> the van is in my daughter's dad's name. Oh. And he wanted to come up here and find you. Well, it's not even your property but... then. You can't. You can't tell me not to paint on it. Not to spray paint it. And I'm driving it. It's in my possession. But I'm saying I don't think it's really my fault that I cracked the bumper because I wasn't in my car at the time. I was underneath the van, mm-hmm. and and like I'm lucky right. to be alive. Well, thanks your, for calling me. Your and van. You're not on my van no more. Well, it's not even your van. It's your dad's daughter's whatever. It doesn't matter, dude. I know, you but don't go around writing on people's cars. I, it's not that I just scribbled nonsense on it. It's art. I have nothing more to say. Timber. Roy's the man, the man with the cacti touch. He'll strip your love nuts. Such a phone loser. That is you. Be sorry about that, dude. But don't you read? I find it kind of hard to believe you'd be messing with my blood now. Racist? Are you a different race, Roy? Or are you the asshole race? I was hotboxing. What's that? You smoke one marijuana while the windows are all rolled up? That's got fucked up. Why were you jerking on my handle? Timber. Girls, my box in your dots and truck. Roy, don't give a fuck. He loves phones. Waiting for calls. He loves phones. Only phones.
You're listening to The Snowplow Show. Today is Ding Timber 2nd, 2016. And today's show is sponsored by Jeff. Thank you, Jeff, for being a supporter of the show. If you'd like to be a supporter of the show, please support us at patreon.com slash phonelosers or phonelosers.org slash cactus. This was a live show, and I don't really have anything for the intro, so let's just get into it. Here's the show. Hey, everybody. I am Roy. I'm doing a show. I'm doing the Digging Timber show. That introduction, I, I hope most of you remember it. That, that's uh, Liz Darwin's creation. Uh, she made that last year, right around the end of Ding Timber. So, you guys have been putting notes on cars for me. And the notes say something like, uh, you know, Hey, uh, sorry I dinged your car. Please give me a call. Here's my phone number. And you're giving them my phone number, which uh, the new phone number is 401 526 Three seven six nine. That's the number you should be writing on notes, and then signing them Roy, and then putting them on random people's cars. Hopefully, you're uh, being careful. I remember one year, um, some guy put some notes on some cars, and the the guy at Safeway, the manager, let the guy come in and look at the security cameras and try and try and see who put the note on his car. So, be careful. Try not to get arrested or beat up or anything. Because, I don't know, I might feel bad. If you get beat up, I'll probably send you a free sticker, though. So that's an upside. Um, you can still use the old carding number, the one that started with 425. Uh, it's going to be good for another couple months. Or I'll probably just shut it off exactly after Ding Timber. But Google Voice, good old Google Voice, they tell me uh, which number they're calling in on. So it's kind of cool. I can see if they're calling in on the old number or the new number. So we, we listened to quite a few of these yesterday. There's so many fakes. I, when, I, when I turned on the voicemail, I hadn't listened to it since last year. There were 250 messages. Uh, all of them, I, some of them trying to pretend to be a carding victim. Most of them just being like, oh my god, the number works. Ha- Hi, Roy. I should just have an entire show where I play all 250 of those messages because I haven't deleted them yet. So let's see. Where where did I start yesterday? Let's try... Let's listen to this message. So so a lot of the show today, it's going to be me playing a voicemail. Oh, by the way, there's no chat room today. I'm sorry. I'm not broadcasting on YouTube, but I am broadcasting on Mixler for the first time in about nine months or so. So uh, if you're listening on the Shoutcast, maybe you want to switch over to the Mixler. I think most people are on, are, are on Mixler because, holy crap, there's 209 listeners. Oh, and, and I hadn't turned on Mixler uh, since January on, on the PCN, so I accidentally broadcasted on PCN for about three minutes today. Oops. I thought they would have changed the password by now. Anyway, so I, I'll get the, the video stuff working tomorrow. I, I just had some issues today. Um, a lot of today's show, it's just going to be me playing a voicemail, and then we're going to talk about uh, what to do to them, and then I'm going to call them. It's going to ring a bunch, and then they won't pick up, and we'll move on to the next one. That's the formula for today's show. Uh, I guess I should look at some of the Ding Timber ideas uh, on the the Facebook group. I've got that opened up here. I don't know. Your car wouldn't stop looking at me, so I punched it. I think I'm going to wait for uh, weird stuff like that until maybe closer to the end of the show or the end of the month or something. Uh, My Confederate flag belt buckle dinged your car as I was putting this note on your windshield. Yeah, yeah, okay. Why not? I wish it told me who made the ideas, but it doesn't. Uh, that one's like uh, number number three in the voting on Facebook. So I'm sorry you guys can't hang out with me in a chat room and, and suggest things. Um, there, there is the Discord chat room. I'm sitting in there right now, but nobody's ever in that. And I would, like since there's no chat room, I have no way to give you guys the URL to the chat room. Maybe if somebody out there knows it, you can give it out to your friends or whatever. Yeah, this is uh, Jeff. You left a note on my car that said you dinged it. If you could give me a call back at 488, let me know where you hit it because I really don't see anything. Thank you. What a nice sounding guy. Nice, friendly old man. Let's let's ruin his day. Nah, he sounds like he'll just laugh along with me. He'll be one of those guys. He's probably not going to pick up anyway. Hello? 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 Jeff? Hello? Jeff? Jeff, it's Roy. I left a note on your car. Well, I didn't hear it.
pick up or anything. It just kind of stopped ringing. Hello, Jeff? Jeff, I left a note in your car. Hello? Hello? I dinged your car. I'm so I, I'm calling to say I'm sorry. And, and where did you hit it? Oh, that was so weird. Like I, It seems like I, I heard you pick up, but then you didn't say anything. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, it's, where it's, where did you hit it? It's weird. I'm shaking. Uh, like okay, so I was leaning over your car, like over the the front part, to leave a note. Uh, I was I was leaning over your car to leave the note, and my Confederate flag belt buckle it kind of scraped there, kind of by the front door. At my door? Yeah, yeah. As I was leaning over to leave the note, it scraped the car a little bit with my belt buckle. It, it, did you is that all you did yeah yeah i just scraped up the side a little bit because I, I was leaning over and i'm I'm kind of fat and i just i had a yeah. hard time putting the note into your windshield and as as i was putting the note in there it uh you know i just scratched up the side of the car but but where where whereabouts did you did you hit it uh well i didn't hit it I, just, I don't i just scratched it with my belt buckle you know well, why were you leaning on it? Uh, I was leaning over it to leave a note to let you know that I dinged it and I'm sorry. Just in case, I don't know if you wanted to do something with yeah, insurance. Yeah, but where, where, just, you dinged it where? Uh, kind of kind of at belt buckle level. Um, just right along the, the top of the hood, kind of, by the front door. You know, I, while I was lean, I, leaning over to put that note in your windshield, I, I dinged it up a little bit. I... I don't see anything. Huh. Well, it, it looked pretty it t- pretty deep to me, I thought. Well, whereabouts now? Uh, on, on, the, on the driver's side. Oh, no, on the passenger side. On the passenger side? Yeah. And the front fender. That's the I, one. I, I, I'm, I'm out here now. I don't see anything. Hmm, that's crazy, because it's just from my belt buckle. As I was leaning over, it just kind of scraped the car. Are you I, sure? The, 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 it's a white car, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the one, the one I put the note on. Yeah, and I, I was just leaning over yeah. your car, and my, my Confederate flag belt buckle just kind of scraped up the side of the car. I I really I really don't see anything. Hmm, okay, well, that's good. There's... there's, there's it's I there's some I mean it's dirty it just came out of the repair shop maybe you need to get your damn eyes checked huh <laughs> I I honestly honestly can't see anything I know that's what I'm saying maybe you need to get your damn eyes checked because <laughs> because I left the, the scratch on there with my confederate flag bell buckle there's on the on the passenger side, right? Yeah, yeah. On the passenger front, side, I was le- I was I was leaning over to put the note on your windshield, and I kind of scraped up the side there with my belt buckle, my Confederate flag belt buckle. I I I honestly don't see a thing. Huh. Okay. Well, that's good. I guess I don't have I, to pay I, anything I, to I'm, your insurance. I'm out here. I'm out here now, looking it over, and I. Uh-huh. I I can't see anything. Maybe if you look it over several more times and then tell me several more times that you can't see it, just to be sure. I'm, I'm, I'm actually rubbing down the front fender. Mmm. Mmm. And I. It's hot. And I really. And, and all I'm getting off is dirt. <laughs> yeah, I got to get off that dirt. I, mm, I, mm. Keep talking. <laughs> this is hot. <laughs> I I honestly honestly don't see anything. Okay, well that's good to hear. I th- I thought it was a deeper scratch, but I guess I was wrong. No, there's it's it's the car's dirty. Like I say, it's been in the shop, but I honestly it's a dirty car honestly, that you're rubbing off trying to get off. Yeah, I just. My hand's filthy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it is. That, that's a dirty little hand, isn't it? Because I, I honestly don't see anything. So I guess we're good to go. As long as it's honestly. I, I know you're not honestly, lying. I, I, I honestly don't see anything. Okay. 
Well, you need to get your because when I because huh. when I when I got the I got the note, I I looked the car all over. I went, you know, end to end. Yep. Yep. And well, th- I'm, I'm actually washing the fender, and there is nothing on it. Well, thank God that scratch magically disappeared from my Confederate flag belt buckle. <laughs> All, all I'm getting is a. Oh, I see a little. If, if this is what you no, that came off. If that's the scratch right there, I'm not worried about it. Maybe it's under your car, like on the bottom part. No, that's. I see one little thing here, but oh, I see. Uh, this is something I'm not worried about. Yeah, way down there. I'm really short. Did I did I forget to mention that? I'm really short. <laughs> so my belt buckle is like, you know, tire level. Yeah, it's right right. Don't uh, don't make fun I'm, of me I'm for being a midget either cuz cuz I can kick your ass. I may be short, but I can uh, I may be short, but I can kick your ass. So don't make fun of me for being a midget. I'm not making fun. <laughs> and, and you can't say the word midget either. I can say it because I am a midget. But, are you really? Yeah, but for you, it's just are, like a, a little person. Are pulling my chain here? No, I'm completely huh? serious. I'm just saying I, I accidentally scratched your car while I was leaning over the windshield to set the note in the windshield and the wiper. But, I, what, but why were you putting a note on? Oh, finally, we're there. <laughs> Jesus. Um, to, to let you know that I had accidentally dinged it. You dinged it with your belt buckle? Yeah, as I was leaning over to leave the note, I accidentally, I get my, what? I, but, I just but, scratched but, it up. Why were you leaving a note? Uh, to let you know about th- about the carding. So, so you know, so if you wanted to do insurance or anything like that. But but I don't I don't understand why you were leaning over the car to put a note on it. Well, so I could so you could know you know when when you got out there that that I had dinged it. But while I was putting the note down, but, I accidentally. But what? But. What what reason did you have to put a note on it? Why were you leaning on my car to begin with? To to put the note up there to let you know that that in case you want to do to do insurance, you know, so you'd know. I I I understand that. My question is Apparently you don't. Why did uh, No, you're not you're not understanding me. Why what was your purpose? In leaning on my car to put a note on it. I was, I was just trying to be a nice Christian man and leave a note I, because I, that's the I, right thing to do when you I, ding someone's I under, car. I understand that, but for what reason oh, were this you, again. Did, did you run into my car? No, no, I just walked over slowly and, and put the note on the windshield, but as I was leaning over... Um, my my belt buckle, my Confederate flag belt buckle, it scraped the side of the car. I, I, I've got that. My question is, if if you didn't hit my car or anything, why were you near it? Well, it's just because I, I was because I was putting the note on on the windshield, and, and that, were that's you, what. That, were you walking? Were you walking by my car, or? Yeah, yeah, I kind of walked around it. You know, I walked over to the passenger side and I put the note on the windshield. But then my belt buckle from my Confederate flag it scra- scratched it up a little. Uh, but what was your purpose in <laughs> being by my car? To put the note on there, so you would know, because I'm a Christian. I'm not. I, I, I'm not just going to scratch was, your. I I get that. I'm not but just going to. What s- was the reason? I'm not just going to scratch someone's note. car I'm not, and not leave a note because that. How, ma- how, how, I I understand. You ma- scratched my car with your belt buckle. Yeah, I get that. Because it was a naughty car. But I do. But I don't understand. Dirty. Is why you were near my car to begin with. Ah, oh, this again to leave the note. Are we? Th- but why did you have to? Why did you have to leave a note? So you would know to call me, and we could make insurance arrangements. I, I understand that. My question is, why were you near my car in the first place before you even scratched it? You don't have to. Yell, you don't have to. Yell- 
You, you don't have to yell I'm at me. I'm not yelling. <laughs> I'm not yelling. I'm oh just trying God. to understand what got you to my car. My feet. I was I was walking that day. You, I, I just uh, you know I you just. Were, yep. You 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 walked by. You walked that close to my car. Uh yeah. Yeah, I, I walked over there because I had to to put the the note up there. Like I, you know, I am very short, so I had to I, get kind of close. Understand. I understand that. I'm I'm trying to understand is why you were by my car in the first place before you even scratched it. Uh, why were you by my car? Uh, I was just walking to work. I, I was walking to the video store, and uh, you know, I just I, I, that's just the route that I took today or i mean that day not today but 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 i can't i can't understand why you would be that close to my car well i was just walking by it's not a big deal it's not like i'm a car thief anymore no it's like i said it's not a big deal i like i said i don't even see anything wrong with it well you're sure making a big deal of it jesus i i'm just trying to understand why you were by my car and to, to begin with well, to leave the note so you would Other know that it had been scratched i know to leave a note but i can't i can't understand why you would scratch my car and then leave a note well it's not it wasn't on purpose it's just it, it, my belt buckle i understand from, that from my confederate but flag I, belt buckle I, just I understand i just can't i just can't comprehend why you would be that close to my car? I don't know. I, I'm exhausted at this point. Can 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 we just go? Do you need my insurance policy number? No. Because I, I I'm just I'm getting a headache. All right. And and I'm looking at my hand and it's starting to fade out of existence, like Marty McFly, with all this this <laughs> paradox talk. Well. I just can't understand. I I just can't understand why you would be that close to my car. I I also um, I urinated in my pants when you were yelling at me, and I I really need to go change. All right. Goodbye. All right. Well, bye. Have a nice day. I I could have just I, I should have just done that for the rest of the hour. Just argued with that guy, argued in circles. And at first, I thought he was uh, just fucking with me. I thought he was a listener. Talking about his dirty car and rubbing the fender, rubbing it off. All that. <laughs> that, that was was that a real person, you guys? Was it? Because I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, this is uh, the person's or your hit. I am assuming. Uh, you can reach me at seven one six. Thank you. All right, that guy did not sound amused. So I don't know, should I do a few more uh, Confederate flag things? Let's see what else is on this list. Uh, my ex had the same color as your car, and it enraged me. I kind of like that one. Beat the shit out of his car. Uh, the prostitute I had sex with in your car left her crack pipe in the back seat. Hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll work that in, maybe, somehow. Uh, <laughs> uh, shut up, hang up the phone. Tell your husband to call me back, I don't have time for this. So anyway, let's just call this guy and do whatever. Alright, it's Kevin. Oh, hey, Kevin. This is Roy. I left a note on your car. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Where did you apparently hit it? Uh, just not all over the, the hood and the, the side of the fender. I was, um, hitting it with a wiffle ball bat. Because uh, my ex actually has this, almost the same car as you. And it just enraged me and I just flipped out. I, I I hit it all over the window, the the hood, and luckily it was a wiffle ball bat. But it it you know there was dents. Did you see the dents? No, I didn't. That's why I was looking all over the car trying to find dents. And yeah, all all over the hood a bunch and like scuff marks, you know, and the fender and the the window. Thank God I didn't have an aluminum bat because I I'd probably go to jail or something. <laughs> um, one, one bat. One, okay. one bat. Let me uh, let me go look because I I didn't see any damage, so I, I was gonna go and look because I was looking all around the I basically see. just the panels and the outside, you know, fender and that. Yeah. Bumpers, but uh, th- where did this happen? Um, I don't know. Wherever you were, I, I've been. I was all over the place the other day. Because <laughs> I I'm at. Sh- 
Oh, was that where That's it was, where parked? I was parked? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm around that area a lot. That's I was picking up a uh, woman of the night. Oh, and incidentally, I needed to ask a question. All right. So, um, I, we were in the back seat for a little while of your car, and she left a small glass pipe. I, I think maybe you fell out of her uh, purse or how something. How were you in the back seat of my car? You couldn't even get into it. Well, no, we opened it up. How'd you open I, it up? It's locked. Well, with the Slim Jim. Oh. The, yeah, the, so when, when you uh, open the back doors, that doesn't set off the alarm, only the front doors. Okay. But anyway, we were hanging out back there for a while, and we know we had the pipe when we got in, but then it was just gone. So I think we it, we, it must have fallen in your floorboard. Are you around it right now? Can you check? I can go out and look. Hold on. Okay, thanks. Hold music. I, I wonder if the on his way out to the car <laughs> to check, and then he comes back. Will that be enough time for him to come to his senses and realize this doesn't seem right? Prostitute in my car. Crack pipe. Wiffle ball bat. Something here doesn't add up. What could it be? Uh, in the Discord chat, the number three is saying, I left my Slim Jim in your car. Sunshine wants to know how, how many people will suddenly find damages. You, there, There's a lot of them, I promise. People are always finding damage on their car that they just never noticed before. Then all of a sudden, it's my fault. And then, then they, they, you know, they really want to take it to the insurance company and get 500 bucks or whatever they get for it so many insurance scamsters out there basically my show is breeding insurance scamsters holy shit this show must really suck because uh, half the listeners are gone now but who needs them anyway as long as you guys are here right right hopefully the mixler sounds good I think I'm gonna stick to the mixler for a while or I'm going to try it out at least. Everyone's always complaining that I don't have Mixler. Thank God we're not on YouTube. They'd be yelling at me about this music. Well, I looked all over. Uh-huh. And I don't think it was my car. Oh, you don't? No. Is that, are we because there's no, no dents anywhere. There's no pipe in the back seat. Well, it was a wiffle ball bat, and we wouldn't have left yeah. it on the wrong car. We're not stupid. But there was no, there's no dents in, in anywhere. Hmm. Well, yeah, it was a wiffle ball bat. I'm just, I thought there might be scuff marks or something. Because I was really angry when I saw yeah. your car because it's the exact same as my my ex-girlfriend's. Yeah. Yep. So. And, I, cause, and I didn't find anything in my back seat. Okay. Well, maybe we dropped it somewhere else then. I'll have to walk around there some more because that was an expensive crack pipe and we really yeah. kind of need it back. Yeah, I mean, if I found it, yeah, that's no problem. But, uh, yeah, I didn't see nothing back there. I was, it was just everything I had in the back. Hey, if you find a crack pipe anywhere uh, around there, do you think you could just maybe uh, give me a call back? Yeah, sure. Because that'd sure. be nice. Okay. So where where did you do the, all this? Because I've only been parked here since 730. Um, I don't know. It was, it was we, we, we did this like uh, days ago. I don't know. Or was it yesterday? Was I that today? Oh, no, that was today, wasn't it? I'm sorry, I've been smoking a lot of crack. Okay, because I, I don't really don't think it was my car. Yeah, well, I know because, you don't uh, think so, but, I didn't. but you sound like a moron, so it's it, may, it probably was. Uh-huh. Okay. And, I, I, and, you know, really, I think you probably found the crack pipe, and you're just keeping it for yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I just had two guys with me looking. Oh, so one of them probably found it. So now there's like three yeah, suspects in my crack yeah, pipe I theft. So. I mean, it has sentimental value, and it's... All right. <laughs> Let's see if there's anyone else I can call. Or I guess I could call him back. That was rude of him. I'm, I'm going to, like, force him to say goodbye or something. I don't know. Hello. Hey, you hung up on me without saying goodbye. All right, goodbye. All right, thank you. Better say goodbye. <laughs> That's better. All right, I'll 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 delete that one, I guess. All right, car dings are over for the day. So you can all just kind of tune out now. It's over. I mean, we could sit here and uh, uh, listen to all of the fake messages I've gotten over the past year, like like this one. Hey, Roy. You should call me back, because I love clowns. Yeah. <laughs> he loves clowns. I should call him back. 
I think uh, a lot of YouTubers uh, see the notes that I posted on the video that has the phone number and everything. Uh, it's time for synchronized peeing, everybody. I'll be right back. I was carrying my bags to parking lot B, and off in the distance, a flicker I see. It's under my wiper, I bend down to read. I dinned your car up, yes, Roy did the deed. Well, that's pretty nice, this man is so kind. He left me his number to call in due time. I can't see a ding, so I drive on back home to call this dear angel on his telephone. Well, three days go by, no calls coming in. I wait by the phone and binge drink some gin. My shirt is all sweaty, this call I can't miss. My shorts are all soaked from a half flaccid piss. I dribbled the rest cause my phone started ringing. I ran to go answer it, practically singing. Hello, is this Roy? It is, thanks for calling. I waited and wondered, I thought you were stalling. What's that you say? You broke in my car to smoke one marijuana with the door not ajar? There's a whole bag of ticks that you dumped right inside when Uber unlocked it and you took a ride. Your notes from the future, says the pain in my ass. A human pigeon peed flew in as you siphoned my gas. Roy, you're full of shit. This call is not fun. You better watch out. I know Andy Anderson. You're just like a cactus and all over prick. Andy says, Google the number and let's find this dick. The results say phone losers. You've got a whole site of prank call recipients that you call day and night. I hit like and subscribe as I laugh and remember to not answer the phone during the month of September. That was beautiful. I think you deserve some applause for that one. Thanks for leaving that on the voicemail. Tangent. I just wanted to tell everyone that DEFCON 25 is officially canceled. Oh, man. And that you are a fucking hope. Knew this would happen. Thank you. Okay, so amazing poem. And then I get called a hobo. Very nice spectrum of voicemails today. Roy, John Johnson here. I'm a new listener. I started hey, listening John. a couple months ago, and I'm going through downloading all the old shows and listening to them, but I can't get... Oh, you better be paying for them. You better not be getting them from a torrent. We do not tolerate piracy around here. April 13th, 2015. Oh, crap. Now I didn't hear what you said. All the old shows and listening to them, but I can't get past April 13th, 2015. You need to fix that shit. Oh, guys. yeah. Yeah. You Sucks to, to be you. Well, I'll do that once I start making some fucking money. I'm broke. Mm-hmm. Love the show. I like to listen to these old episodes because I, you know, work several fucking jobs and I'm in the car, I'm driving. So I'm listening to a lot of podcasts and I'm glad I found this one. Uh, Yay. Up. I love it. Fix the old show so I can listen to them. Catch yeah, catch. yeah, I'll get to it. 2013 should work. I just fixed all of 2013 uh, last week, I think. And speaking of torrents, if you want to just download every single episode ever made, there is a torrent of all of the PLA stuff, all of the videos, all the audio, the artwork, the text files, the music, everything. And to get that, you just need to go to phonelosers.org slash torrent and download the latest one, which I guess would be 2015. But I agree, I do need to fix those archives. I didn't know that part of 2015 was broken, so that's good information to have. I can fix those easily. So I think the only thing that's currently missing is 2014. All of 2014. I need to put those up somewhere. I'll get to it one of these years. Hey, Roy, when you do the construction uh, type jobs, why not just tell them that half of it's already been paid for and that you needed the other half to complete the job, otherwise you're just going to leave it as is. Hey, just, okay. a, just a suggestion. Bye. Yeah, yeah. I've I've almost told people that it's already paid for, but for some reason I kind of held back on that because I thought it would make the call unbelievable because it would seem like less of a mistake that way, I guess. But that's dumb. I should just do that, or I should do what you say. Just say half of it was paid for. Say they paid cash. I'll keep that in mind when I call the rest of Jasper Flax's numbers. Hey, Brad. It's infected. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Hello. Uh, I'm just calling to say that I'm disappointed that you didn't get to my email, that you didn't do the prank that I wanted you to do at my old workplace. I'm a jerk. If you would seriously consider going ahead and, I don't know, calling my old workplace and doing the stuff in the email that I sent you, I don't know, maybe I'll be a patron supporter for a month. Don't try to bribe. Brad. Don't try to bribe me. Yeah, I'm sorry to everyone whose requests I haven't gotten to. There are hundreds of them sitting in an email folder, so I have no idea which one is yours. And the big problem with individual requests is that it's just a lot easier for me to do the lists of requests. You know, like a a list of, uh, you know, Pigeon Club racers and a list of Dart League club members. 
stuff like that. It all comes down to me being lazy. And it's kind of hard to do the individual prank requests live on the air because so many of them just don't answer. So it's kind of a thing I like to do on the pre-recorded shows, but I don't seem to do a lot of pre-recorded shows anymore. But maybe I should. See, this is why everyone listening should support the show with Patreon, because I just don't have time for the stuff. I have to work for more than half of the week still. But if I could do this every single day, all day, that might help me get to the individual prank requests. See, now I'm bribing you guys. Yeah, I know you hate second messages. Uh, this is going to be really quick. Yep. Is it really Usually quick? when someone leaves a second message, I just save it for the next show, or, or I delete it. But I don't remember what your first message is. I think it was played on the last show. Where is your side show host? You know, the extra people that come in what? And, and help you with some pranks and stuff. Come on, are, I'm, I'm are too much of a loner for that. Still there, or is that just gone? Uh, I haven't listened to everything new since you've done it. I found you at... Uh, anyways, I was going to make that short. Uh, I'll keep it there. Bye. Okay. I don't know. I occasionally bring someone else in. Like a few weeks ago, we had train wreck on. And I guess I did it a little more often back when PCN was still a thing. But I just don't have any plans to have a co-host or anything on this show. I know it happens occasionally, and it's fun. Like when me and Liz got to prank all those church people, that was pretty fun. Or when me and Dwight and Jag TV we pranked a bunch of lawn people. Or we did Amazon drone pranks. I can't remember. Anyway, I don't want a co-host. Unless it's Stacy, I just don't want a co-host. Because, you know, co-hosts, they'll just, they'll just talk about themselves. I don't want people talking about themselves. I want everything to be about me. It's all got to be about me, goddammit. Roy, I have a sensible question. I'm feeling one, by the way. Oh, yay. Sensible I know question. I you probably don't do this because you're a lazy motherfucker. But probably. why do you never mix up your pranks? And what I mean by that is... Your whole show will be on, um, I don't know, disabled people or um, wheelchair access or whatever. But what I'm, I guess what I'm saying is... You make it sound like I only pick on disabled people. You mix things up. Why don't you do one call on disabled people, one call on housing, one, pick, one call on fucking... Tenants from hell? Ding Timber. Yeah. I don't know, it's just a thought because... I love your show. I've been listening to you for over, what, two years now, and I enjoy it. Um, it saves me from having to listen to shitty conversations on, on trains. Oh, yeah. But Fuck that. Well, I'm just wondering why you don't mix things up. I mean, I've already asked you why you don't actually call into national numbers that because you're a cheapskate. But that's fine. But, yeah, please, mate, mix it up because... Sometimes after a while, listening to every fucking same call, which is always oh, come on, it's old fun. people. Yeah. You get to hear Pick the calls. Come on. Bye. You get to hear the calls being perfected. That's what it is. That's how you should look at it. It's like doing a shitty prank call at the beginning, and then by the end, it's all polished up and perfect. And really, the real reason I do that is because usually I'm working off of a list of, you know, like a, a list of the cacti camera neighborhood people or a list of apartment complex people. I'm working off of lists. So, of course, they're all going to be kind of the same theme. So I'm sorry. I don't think I'm going to mix it up quite that much, mainly because that would just be kind of harder to do, to do a bunch of lists all in one show. I would get all confused and I would forget which lists I've finished. It would be chaos. The situation room would probably burn to the ground. I don't know. This just seems dangerous, what you're suggesting. I don't think I should try it. I get what you're saying, and I agree that it probably would be cooler to mix it up, but it would just be a huge, huge pain in the ass to to mix it all up like that. So, request denied. Hello, Ross. Rupert here. Okay. No, no. I'm sorry, Rubrek, or whatever your name is. It sounds awful. I think your last voicemail was like this. It's like nearly a minute long voicemail. No, no, can't handle that. Sorry. Oh, dear Brad, of course, it's Corbin guy yeah. again. And I always Speaking of minute long voicemails. Very awesome things to say. And this here is called Constructive Criticism and Feedback. Okay. And um, our new segment I've been, uh, here in the Snowplow Show. a good friend of mine to a lot of your shows so you have a new uh, fan and snowplow show listener Yay. however though um he has some uh, very important points to make about your verbiage and your speaking your interactions with people i know Especially when i'm a spaz calling people just just tell him i'm a spaz just accept that i'm a spaz i don't know how to speak english here you go uh, hello um yeah i, I think it must work, work a little better if you wait a little longer to call a motherfucker 
Okay. Then you can call that there. There doesn't mean I can get lying, alright? I think you're playing short. Okay. <laughs> alright. There you go, butthead. Have Thanks. a good day. Thanks, Corbin guy, and your new homeless meth addict friend. Okay, one last voicemail. Hey, Roy, you're the t- retarded boy. Cactus, cactus. Thanks. That sounded like that kid that said I like clowns, I think. Only 15 minutes left, so let's just call some 7-Elevens. Something I've been wanting to say to them lately. 7-Eleven truck stop, this is Jennifer. How may I help you? Hi, this is Greg from the corporate office with 7-Eleven. Hi. I, hi, we just needed to find out if you had Crystal Pepsi there. Um, yes, we do. Okay, it looks like a bad batch of it was shipped to your store. Um, we're going to need you to open one up real quick and, and take a smell of it. Um, hold on. Let me get my store manager. Okay. okay. All right. Hello, this is Linda. Can I help you? Hey, Linda. This is Roy from the corporate office with 7-Eleven. Hello. Hi. Uh, I just called to find out about your uh, Crystal Pepsi shipment. It looks like you got one of the bad shipments. I don't know if you've heard about that on the news, but we're going to have to recall those from the shelf. Well, I'll tell you what... Let me look. They've been resetting the cooler. I was down to like six bottles. Okay. I think. Yeah, they. Uh, we reset. We reset the entire cooler, but I never got in. I think I got in a total of may, maybe two cases, if that much, and that's all I ever got. I see. I had only about four or five bottles left over, but they've reset the cooler, and I don't see any. Yeah, so. it, looks, it looks like they accidentally shipped some of the original bottles from the 1980s. <laughs> so I oh guess. Oh my god! Just, are you kidding me? No, not at all. They had like a warehouse full of them, and I guess they were just trying to offload them, and um, oh, th- that's what. Oh my this god! Since 1980? Are you serious? Yeah, from whenever I'm those back were. Here in the cooler, looking. Yeah, we've torn it torn apart, redoing it, redoing the coolers, and I write all the orders. Yeah, I don't need your life story. So but we just need you to. Um, I think it's. I think it's already gone, or one of the other employees bought the last bottle oh, because geez. I had already started chucking uh, rec- uh, twenty ounce Pepsi well, bottles behind them because that's where they're going to slide. I don't see any back here. Did they buy it to drink? Like did, did your employee buy it to drink or uh, to just to keep? Well, I know we had some employees when we, when I first got them a few weeks ago. Uh, that they were drinking them. Oh, and, oh my Because I was curious what it was, and they said, "Yeah, it tastes like Pepsi, except uh, a little bit sweeter." And, and they're st- they're still okay. They're still okay. Like they haven't developed any I, of the symptoms. They haven't died or nothing like that. <laughs> that's, that's like so, a Zika but, virus I mean, type we, symptoms. We had such a, a small, small amount. Anyway, uh, so we just needed to go in. to the cooler <laughs> and so uh, try some left. of the. Could could you go? You have w- at least one though, right? That's what the cashier said. We just need you to open one up real quick and smell it and make sure it's well, one of the bad I, ones. I, that's what I'm saying is I, I can't find any at all. Ah shit! You know, um, hmm. I don't know why they told you we had Pepsi Crystal because we don't have Pepsi Crystal. Oh, she's a. I mean, originally it was wh- supposed to go in that ice wh- barrel. Which employee that was, was that? Door, which employee? But I never, but I never bloop, got bloop, in bloop, enough bloop, to bloop, even bloop, put bloop, any bloop, in the bloop, ice bloop, barrel. Bloop, bloop. Which employee was that that um, said that there was Crystal Pepsi? I don't know. I've got eight of them here. The one that just answered the phone? Yeah, yeah. She handed you the phone. Who was that? Oh, that was Jennifer. Oh, Jennifer. But she, she was... They don't, they don't know what's in the cooler. Oh, I know. They fucking fucking dumbasses. The they don't even walk over and see what we got. Dumbass employees. They bring them up. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway... I don't, I don't have a single bottle left. Anyway... I mean, as of, as she, of two days ago, I only had about four or five bottles left. Yeah, anyway, uh, Jen- we're going to have to let Jennifer go. Jennifer's going to get fired okay. because of uh, her insubordinance and, and lying to a corporate <laughs> office person. No, I'm serious. You need to go over to her right now and fire her. T- tell her to pack up her Seriously? shit. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, we're going to need you. Uh, what did you ask her? Just simply, do we carry the Crystal Pepsi? Yeah, no, I said, do we have any? She said there's about six bottles, I think. Yeah, and well, I did about two, three days ago, but like I said, they've reset the, uh, this store changes here we go again. over on the 14th. Oh, boy. So I've got SRS here, and I've got a yeah, couple who, of who the St. Louis corporate really? managers, and they've been re schematicing the entire store Just and talking the cooler, to yourself, lady. And I'm back here right now, and I still cannot anyway. find any Pepsi Crystal at all. Oh, okay, so yeah, so Jennifer was definitely, definitely going to um, need to get fired. Can you run out there real quick and talk to her? Uh, just stay on the phone with me, and in case you want some some uh, someone you know to 
back up your claims. So yeah, just uh, okay. go fire. Okay, all over because she said we had Pepsi Crystal. Yep, yep. She's gonna. I'm sorry, we have to do it, but you know, got to be done. Okay. That means it's it. That means it's uh, uh, yeah. But go on this side. Or, oh, we'd have to burn the break energy for you. Yeah, they usually take that up. Sorry, I'm got customers. Uh, can right you tell that customer to shut the fuck up? Because we, we got to do this firing thing. Okay. And what was your name again, sir? My name is Roy Zerbell from the corporate office. Do you have a phone number I can call you right back Yeah, on? it's on your caller ID. And so, like, if you want, instead of firing Jennifer, we can give her a choice. We can either fire her or you can slap her in the face one time. Like, really, okay. really hard, this though. Okay, conversation's done. No. Sir, bye. <laughs> really hard. It'll be fun. How many times do you get to slap someone in the face? I would do it. I didn't want her to, to, to go fire the employee, you know. I've, I already made one girl cry this week. Or, the, you know, in the past week, I guess. I don't want to do another one. 7-Eleven, this is Katie. Hey, Katie, this is Roy from the corporate office with 7-Eleven. Uh-huh. And uh, I just need to find out, do you have any Crystal Pepsi in stock? Um, give me one second and I can check. Okay. I have corporate online asking if we have Crystal Pepsi in stock. Okay, um, my manager said yes, we do. Okay, we just needed to get one of the bottles, and we're going to take a quick look at it, because we think you might have gotten a bad batch. Okay, give me one second. Okay. okay. Um, give us an Andy. Hey, why not look at a bottle or something? I don't know. This is Andrew. Hey, uh, is this the manager? Yes. Oh, this is Roy from the corporate office with 7-Eleven. Uh, we're just, uh-huh. I think there might have been a bad shipment of Crystal Pepsi to your store. And we just need oh, okay. to check one of the bottles, if you could check real quick. Uh, yeah, let me grab one. Hold on. Okay. All right, what numbers are we looking for? Oh, on the bottle. Did you find a bottle? Yeah. Uh, we just need you to open it up and, and smell it just to make sure it's uh, not one of the bad ones. Okay, sure. Okay. C- could you open it ne- next to the phone so I can hear it? Yeah, sure. Okay. There you go. Did you hear it? Oh, no, I didn't hear it at all. It's, oh, a, it's okay. Me... How's how's it smell? It, just fine. Oh, are you sure? Like, it, it's, it smells per- just fine? It's it's not... It doesn't smell like uh, bleach or um, ammonia or anything? No, I think it's good. What, what color is it? It's clear. Is it frothing out of the top and turning red? Like bu- red bubbles? Oh, yeah, it is. It is? So it, that means it's a bad one, then? Yeah, um, it must be. We're definitely going to need you to take these all off of the shelf. Okay. Um, I think the bottle could be defective, too. Can you take the bottle and just hold it up above your head and drop it onto the floor? Real quick. Just real quick. Just do it real quick. I think he's gone. All right, I think we have time for one more of these. And then I'm out of here. Didn't even get to tell that guy that the... Crystal Pepsi was from the 80s. Damn it. That sucks. 7-Eleven. Hello, this is Roy from the corporate office with 7-Eleven. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm calling to find out if you have any Crystal Pepsi in stock. Uh, let me see. It looks like we're currently out of it at the moment. Ah, there's not even any in the back, in the cooler? Uh, I will have to go out there. I have to go back there and look. Give me one second. Okay. Um, yeah, well, we're out of stock of it. Ah, shit, fuck. Yeah. Well, anyway, we're doing the weekly customer survey. Do you have a customer nearby, nearby that I could speak with? Uh, actually, the store is empty at the moment. Oh, I, uh, okay. Is there anyone in the parking lot? Can you run out there and, like, grab someone? Um, hold on one moment. I heard a customer come in. Or leave. Hello, can I help you? Hi, who's this? This is Joyce. I'm the franchisee. Hey, Joyce. This is Roy from the corporate office with 7-Eleven. Uh-huh. And I'm just calling to uh, try and trick one of your employees to put in a customer on the phone so I can make them do silly things. Do you think you could put your employee back on? Okay. I'm sorry. Why are um, you sorry? Corporate doesn't play games. Oh, okay, no, I'm, I'm not playing games. This is for real. <laughs> All right. One more, one more uh, try with the whole Crystal Pepsi thing. I don't know what I'm expecting to happen. I'm just kind of oh. killing, killing time until... Uh, XYZ goes on the air. Hello, 7-Eleven. 
Hello, this is uh, Roy from the corporate office with 7-Eleven. What? And, um, this is Roy from the corporate office with 7-Eleven. Um, and okay. I just needed to... F- what? What do you need, sir? Uh, I'm calling to find out if you have any Crystal Pepsi in stock. Do you have any Crystal Pepsi in stock? No. We do not. Okay. Also, I'm calling to do the weekly customer survey. Do you have a customer there I could speak with? It's just is a survey. What? Is there a customer? Hey, tell that lady in the background to shut the fuck up. I was just calling to find out if you might have a customer there I could speak with. Goodbye, sir. Wh- what? Why? Why are you hanging up? Why? What did I do? I guess one more 7 Eleven. 7 Eleven employees are so rude. By the way, I've been reminded by uh, several listeners now that 9 Eleven is coming up, and on 9 Eleven. I need to call up 7-Elevens and tell them all about the uh, the change, the name change to 9-Eleven. When someone comes in the store, you've got to uh, say, welcome to 9-Eleven. Hopefully I will not be busy on 9-Eleven and I can try some of that. 7-Eleven. Hello, this is Roy from the corporate office with 7-Eleven. Yes. And I'm calling to find out if you have any Crystal Pepsi in stock. One minute, I give to my manager, okay? Okay. Yeah. Let's just listen to the Hello? XYZ show. Hi, is this the manager? Yes, sir. Hi, this is Roy from the corporate office. I'm just calling to uh-huh. do the weekly customer survey. Do you have a customer in there I could speak with? Yeah. Right now... No, I don't have right now. Oh, there's nobody... No customers in the store? Uh, at the moment. Huh, are there any... We have right? one customer walking out. Oh, it's, uh, stop him. Stop him. They get mad if I stop them. No, no, just stop them. It's the corporate office. I I order you to stop them. Yes, hold on. Run, run. Run. Okay, hold on. Run. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me. No, she's gone. Fuck. Fuck. All right, oh well. Do you have any Crystal Pepsi in the store? I think corporate usually don't use these kind of words. Yeah, well, you know, huh? I'm not like other people. I'm a rebel. I'm a yeah, loose cannon here at the corporate again, office. Corporate I can, use I can say, language. I can say whatever the so fuck I want. That make me to think that you are not corporate. Oh that yes, I am. Problem, I am okay? too corporate. I'm so absolutely incorrect. You are not a corporate. I am you totally with the fucking game. corporate office, motherfucker. Okay, then fuck you. What? What? How can you say that to me? That was so rude. Extremely rude, sir. I'm offended. The only way I could have been more offended is if you said something about my mother. That would have really, really got to me. Why haven't you hung up yet? Hello? I think he's just sitting at his desk doing papers or something. He forgot to hang up. Doesn't know how to use a phone. Alright, I'm going to hang up on him. <laughs> we're, we're not going to listen to this guy do office work. <laughs> He's ripping up someone's mail, you guys. Did you hear that? Anyway, I guess the show's over, everyone. Uh, it's time for XYZ to start. He's been on the air for exactly three minutes now. You can uh, listen to him by going to Mixler.com slash XYZ QWA. 7-Eleven Manager, if you're listening to me right now, that's where you should send the police uh, for this prank call. Mixler.com slash XYZ QWA. Everyone go over there and listen to XYZ do pranks and stuff. Bye, 7-Eleven Manager. Bye. Why why did he hang up? It's so weird. Oh no, I think he hit the trace button. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. 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 So that's the end of the live show for September 2nd. This is pre-recorded Brad again, Brad from the future. I've had people telling me for several weeks now to do some Crystal Pepsi pranks. And it's been written in my notes. And I don't know, I just never got around to it until this show. And I can't remember who suggested to do that. To uh, tell them that they received Crystal Pepsi shipments from the 1980s. But that first lady's reaction was all worth it when I told her that it was from the 80s. So whoever suggested that, thank you very much. 
Maybe I'll try and do some Crystal Pepsi pranks again, but I think I'm running out of time because it's just like a special thing that they're doing. I heard that it was just going to be for eight weeks and then they're taking it away forever or until 2036, maybe. So I think I missed my opportunity to uh, take the Crystal Pepsi challenge. So if the live portions of today's show, if they seemed a little butchered, that's because I took quite a few things out. Uh, There were a lot of people not answering and I would play the messages from the recipients. And then their phone would ring forever, and then they wouldn't pick up, just like I predicted. I don't know if ding timber calls are a good thing to do live. I'm sure I'm going to try it several more times this month. But it's so hard to get people to pick up from a different area code than their own. If you would like to participate in this year's ding timber, it's really easy to do. All you have to do is write a note that says, Sorry I dinged your car. Please give me a call at 401-526-3769. And then sign the note Roy. That 401 number, that is the new phone number for this year. Last year we used a 425 number, which does still work, but I would prefer that you use the 401 number because when you Google the 401 number, it doesn't come up with Phone Losers of America, which is kind of nice. Last year, quite a few calls got screwed up because people would Google the number and they would find out that it's a prank because I'd been using that number for five years at that point. So 401-526-3769. I'll probably go ahead and change it again for next year's Ding Timber. In my opinion, it's best not to write things on your note like you were parked stupidly. I mean, you can if you want. It's up to you. You're the one leaving the note. But it seems like last year that was just letting people know that it was a joke or they just thought I was some crazy, irrational person and they went straight to the police with it. So write whatever you want on the notes, but really it's best to just stick to, sorry, I dinged your car. Please give me a call. And uh, don't actually ding people's cars. I mean, I know it sounds hilarious to go out there and, like, smash some windows and then leave my phone number on their car. And I do joke about that a lot, but if you actually busted out all the windows on a car, I don't think that'd make me too happy. So please don't do that. Nobody's done that yet, as far as I know. I know that one year we had a guy whose mirror was knocked off of his car. I think Carl Sanders left that note, and the guy was missing his side mirror because he was parked kind of far out in the road. I think some car just swiped it off of there. But holy shit, they were pissed, and they were they were just positive that I took the mirror off of their car. But anyway, don't damage property. Just leave notes. I don't want you guys to get in trouble. And be careful leaving the notes. Don't get caught. Don't let anyone spot you. Don't get your ass kicked or the police called on you. Uh, Watch for security cameras. I don't think it's illegal to leave a note on someone's window, a note with a very obvious lie on it, but I don't know for sure. I I don't think it's illegal, but I bet you the police could find something to charge you with. Like when I've done weird things in the public, they always threaten to charge me with being a public nuisance. So they could probably get you with that if they catch you putting a note on a windshield, if they really want to. So maybe have a story prepared if you get caught. Like what are you going to say if someone sees you putting a note on their car? Like, have something prepared to say, like, oh, I saw this guy stick this note in your door, but it fell out. And I don't know what's on the note, but I picked it up off the ground and I put it in your windshield wiper for you. You're welcome. You know, something like that might be good to be prepared to keep yourself out of trouble. If you want to suggest ideas for Ding Timber, you should go to phonelosers.org and just leave them in the comments section on the latest show. And I will add them into my list. A few people have done that already. Thank you, Ben. There's also a poll in the PLA Facebook group, which the URL, I believe, is facebook.com slash group slash goawaypla. Is that what it is? I don't even know. I'll put a link to the PLA group in the show notes, though, if you'd like to go there and add to the poll or vote on the carding ideas. Probably the worst place to leave ideas would be the comments on YouTube, because I don't always get to see all of the comments on YouTube, but you can try, I guess. One last thing, I think I mentioned this in the show, but I did broadcast this show on Mixler, which is a very nice audio service. And you can go to the Phone Losers Mixler by going to mixlr.com slash phone losers. People have been complaining at me all year about not being on Mixler anymore because Mixler is just an easy way to listen. It's much easier than Shoutcast because Shoutcast, you have to find an app. Then you have to go and find my Shoutcast URL. Who wants to do all that? So I'm just going to pay for Mixler again. It's like 20 bucks a month. That's the only thing I really hate about Mixler. But Mixler is a great way to get notified about shows because you put the app on your cell phone 
and you create an account for yourself and you follow phone losers on Mixler and it'll beep your phone every single time I go on the air and it will also email you every time I go on the air. So if you're too lazy to get on Twitter and set up the notifications on there, then Mixler might be a good way to go and I'm pretty sure I'm going to stick with Mixler. My plan probably is to always broadcast on Mixler and Shoutcast and then I'll just do one of the random video services or not. Maybe I'll just do audio only. So Mixler is probably here to stay, so everyone should subscribe to the Phone Losers Mixler. You guys asked for it repeatedly, so be happy, you have Mixler now, yay! Okay everyone, the show is over, it's time for me to pack up my shit and get out of here. Thanks once again everybody for listening to the show. Be sure to share the shows with your friends and with your family on Facebook and everything. Carry a pocket knife around with you and whenever you're in a nice restaurant just scratch the URL onto, onto tables and stuff. If you could do that for me, that would be really great. If you get in trouble for doing that, it will be Jeff's fault because Jeff is the sponsor of today's show. Just get in touch with me and I will send you all of Jeff's personal information, email address, home address, cell phone number, whatever you want of Jeff's. I'll give it to you. Just let me know. All alone in your pajamas. I'm not a racist. Who the fuck are you? Then why aren't you letting Nigerians stay in your house? 